and welcome to Chesapeake Weekly. Once again, it's proven that knowing hands-only CPR can literally save lives. A Chesapeake woman is alive today thanks to the brave, swift action taken by her CPR-trained husband. My husband and I are both master gardeners, and we uh, were at the Arboretum Nursery potting plants that we had ordered. There were quite a few people there, I would say probably around 10 or 11. Uh, and I had taken a wheelbarrow full of the plants that we had potted and took it to a specific area to set the plants up. Uh, and this is what I was told because I don't remember anything. Um, one of the master gardeners saw me laying on the ground, called my husband, and then he came over and um, did CPR on me after he had checked to see if I was breathing or anything. Ran over and I found my wife, Kathy, of 48 years, lying on the ground. So I called to her and shook her and there was no response. So I right away looked at her and I said, oh my God, I think something serious has happened here. So I checked and I started giving her CPR. I pulled her blouse up and whatnot, I started giving her CPR because that's where I was trained. CERT trained me to do that sort of thing based upon all the criteria that I had seen there. And I called to some of our other master gardeners, I said, get me an ambulance over here right now. Call 911 and get over. And you know, my heart sank because that's my wife on the ground there. I was told that they came uh, in within three minutes to come and pick me up and take me to the hospital. And, and I was told that they had to shock me twice. Uh, but. Unfortunately, I don't remember any of it. It's just what people had told me. I think bystander CPR is very important. It makes the difference between a good or bad neurological outcome. A lot of the times it helps your brain get oxygen, which is the reason she's awake and talking right now, I believe. Um, and it also makes when you're in that shockable rhythm, that bad heart rhythm, it makes the heart much more likely to receive a shock the right way and reset it and kind of restart it. The Chesapeake Fire Department offers free CPR training on the first Thursday of each month from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Central Library. You can sign up for that training at cityofchesapeake.net. Everyone should know CPR and this training is a great way to ease some of those hesitations you may have when it comes to jumping into action. The city is partnering with Chesapeake Public Schools to create a long-term facilities master plan, and they want your input. This plan will identify and prioritize public school needs for facilities and attendance zone boundaries. Join them at one of the upcoming community dialogue meetings to offer your comments for consideration as they move forward with putting together the plan. The meetings will be held at Indian River High School on November 20th and at Western Branch High School on November 21st, both at from 6 to 8 p.m. They are the same meeting, just two opportunities to fit your schedule. The Public Works Department is working towards their plans for the second phase of the Elbow Road widening project. They're holding an information meeting this Thursday, November 21st from 5 to 7 p.m. at Greenbrier Middle School. Learn more about the upcoming project by visiting the active projects page at cityofchesapeake.net slash publicworks. When we continue our series on tips on how you can best give of your time and money to the less fortunate during this season of giving. Here's this week's tip from Mary Riley with the Human Services Department. If your int other interest in volunteering, you can uh, contact Volunteer Hampton Roads. They have a website and they will give you lots of areas that you can volunteer in the community. Specifically, uh, we need volunteers for our seniors you can call Senior Services of Southeastern Virginia. Our animal shelters need volunteers, um, and they're easy to find on our city website. Also, our Title I schools are in need of food and um, like canned goods and that kind of thing to send home to their students that don't have enough food to eat. And you can drop those off at any of the Title I schools. They're located on the school's website as well as Oscar Smith Middle and Oscar Smith High School also have food pantries. And what they're trying to do is collect enough food that they can send it home with the children on the weekends so that they don't go hungry. It's that time of year already. Time to start thinking about snow. We've already had a tiny taste of the flakes, so it's a good time to start preparing. The Public Works Department has started their prep. They held their annual snow equipment inspection last week.
today we're just checking all the equipment out, make sure uh, we're being prepared for winter time, uh, checking the plows, checking the spreaders, make sure the trucks are safe, make sure they're ready to go. It's, it's important so we're prepared, uh, first and foremost. It, if we get hit with snow tomorrow, we want to be ready. Um, it's also helping out the mechanics in the garage. Um, they're doing inspections too. So we put our notes together and help each other out, make sure the trucks are ready to go. I enjoy when we get snow. I, I enjoy going out there and plowing. It, it keeps us crisp and ready for the next snow. Um, it's hard being away from the families, but um, you know, after the snow, we get to spend time with our families. And... What are some of the things you see when you're out pushing these plows and trucks around in the snow? Uh, see some of the citizens not really paying attention to what's going on and getting in the way of the snow plows. They need to stay their distance away from them a little bit. If they see a snow plow or a snow spreader coming through, if they can just move to the side or move off of the road and let us come through and then continue their journey, it make things a lot safer. When the snow does fall, Public Works reminds us that the first things treated are bridges and overpasses with main or arterial roads next. And when it comes to plowing, again, it's those main roads that get first priority, along with roads leading to critical facilities like fire stations and hospitals. For more information on the process, visit cityofchesapeake.net slash publicworks. Bad weather moved to the final Chesapeake Recycles Day of the year from last Saturday to this Saturday, November 23rd. The event takes place at Tidewater Community College on Cedar Road from 9 a.m. to noon. Bring your old electronics for recycling, household hazardous waste for proper disposal, and sensitive documents for shredding. There are limitations as to how much you can bring, and they will only accept personal items, no business items. The event is free, but they will accept non-perishable food items for donation to local food banks. For more details on what's accepted, visit cityofchesapeake.net slash recycles day. The Chesapeake Are You Ready Substance Use Prevention Awareness Coalition is hosting a screening of the powerful documentary Heroin, The Hardest Hit on Thursday, November 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. at South Norfolk Community Center. The documentary offers a personal look at stories of addiction, overdose, and recovery across the Commonwealth. There will be local resource vendors available, as well as a box to dinner for those who RSVP. The event is free. Register at eventbrite.com. Just search heroin, the hardest hit, to find the listing. Get your holiday shopping started early and support local vendors at the Mary Market at Central Library on Saturday, November 23rd from 10 to 4. Artisans, crafters, and innovators will give you plenty to choose from to knock out your shopping list all in one place. Plus, there will be pictures with Santa and classes on cookie decorating, gift wrapping, and crafts. Learn more at infopeak.org. The Chesapeake Holiday Craft Show is another great option for unique local holiday shopping on Saturday, November 23rd from 10 to 5, and Sunday, the 24th from 11 to 4. Head over to the Chesapeake Conference Center to enjoy tons of local crafters and artisans, plus plenty of fun for the kids, including, of course, a visit from Santa Claus. Learn more at cityofchesapeake.net slash PRT. And of course, the true holiday season does not start until we see some holiday parades. The eighth annual Chick-fil-A Christmas Parade in Western Branch is on Saturday, December 7th, starting at 9 a.m. The parade runs, runs along Chesapeake Square Ring Road. Parking is available at the mall and nearby businesses. Then later that day is the Chesapeake Rotary Christmas Parade in Great Bridge. The parade starts on Mount Pleasant Road at 6 and winds its way to City Hall. Chesapeake Television will broadcast the parade in its entirety, so make sure you're tuning in. You can watch on your television, Cox Channel 48 or Verizon Channel 43, or streaming live on your computer at cityofchesapeake.net slash TV. We'll also replay the parade throughout the month of December, so you can enjoy it again and again. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Chesapeake Weekly. We'll see you next time.